So in this video, I'm gonna give you the absolute best PC you can build for around 15 to $2,200. So if your budget is roughly around there, this is gonna be an absolutely insanely helpful video. I'm gonna talk you through some of the parts I would get, as well as some of the upgrades I would get within the same budget, what I would and wouldn't do, and a lot more. Let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now, this is part of a video series and if your budget is slightly different, don't worry. There is a video for you down in the description below. There's four videos there. Have a look down there and this will lead you to the latest best bank for buck video for the same price point. So find the one that's closest to your budget and click on that. By the way, these are smart links and they're in every single video on the channel and this will always lead you to the latest video. And very importantly, stick till the end of the video because I'm gonna share you some very important things that you need to know when building this PC. If you haven't built PC before or perhaps you have, there's still some very important things that I'd like to mention that you need to know. So let's go. Firstly, for motherboard, we are using the Gigabyte Z790 Aero G DDR5. This is creative focus motherboards, especially. And what does creative focus, what does it mean? Well, firstly, for this price point, I don't think you're gonna get a better motherboard with better specs for creators. So what I want as a creator is very good IO, so very good USB and USB-C support, as well as the connectivity, Wi-Fi, LAN, all of that. It's got all of that, 2.5 gig LAN, but also it supports video output through USB-C. So it's not Thunderbolt, compatible but if you're using a tablet or something as a creator that needs you know video on the tablet and you've got a USB-C cable then this is the motherboard you'd like to get. Now a lot of the gaming or other gaming motherboards don't support that but as a creator this might be very important for you. It's got good front panel connectivity and four M.2 SSDs. All the things that you'd need, I kind of see this there. Also, it looks pretty cool as well. Very important note about the pricing of these parts because you see me you know, showcase these parts on the shop and you can see some kind of price next to it. Most likely when you're watching this video, they are even lower, especially if you're watching this video during the holiday season, there's deals on for every single part. So I highly recommend checking out the latest price in the description below. For CPU, we're gonna be using the 13600K, which is a 14 core CPU and incredible performer. And don't be misled by the i5 badge on there. It's absolutely incredible. It's changing blows with the 12700K and it's got some of the better features than 12700K. So I highly recommend this one. It's one of my favorite CPUs to get as a creator for that budget. It's unbelievable, really. And I highly recommend checking out the links in the description below because most likely the new gen is just around the corner which we're not going to go with because of some of the platform stability issues with the new platform but that means that this cpu and these parts are even cheaper so i'll recommend checking out the latest pricing through the links below to cool this bad boy we need a good cooler which is this thermal ride peerless assassin and don't get misled by the low price of this cooler this cooler is absolutely incredible we've tested this on the channel and this actually beats out some of the many times more expensive coolers. This is unbelievable, best bang for buck CPU cooler. And this is gonna be fine for this 14 core CPU. Can you believe that you can get 14 core CPU for this price? It's absolutely insane. Now for the OS SSD, we're using the Solidime P44 Pro, one terabyte drive. This goes up to seven gigabytes per second, read and write speed sequential. But the main caveat with this SSD is it's incredible random read and write performance which is very important for your os and programs and project drives so when you're working with files you're actually using a lot of little files all over the ssd and you want to read them from all over the place which this ssd does really well in fact it's actually slightly better than the samsung 990 pro which is much more expensive so i highly recommend checking this one out and the review on the channel if you haven't seen it yet now at our price point we can actually get two of these drives and have one as an OS drive and one as a project drive. So you can separate it to get even better performance and better workflow 
for your creative needs. For RAM, we're using 64 gigabytes of DDR5, 5600 megatransfers per second from Corsair Vengeance. For this price, it's unbelievable, really, that DDR5 has fallen so much. This used to be double it, like, 12 months ago. And you might be saying this is not the fastest DDR5 and this 13th gen actually support a lot faster RAM, but also it might not because the IMC of the CPU goes up to 56 mega transfers per second, meaning that if you go above that in RAM speed, you're actually gonna enter into the unstable you know, region, even though it might support that, but Intel doesn't promise it can support that. And most of the CPUs will do that, but it's also out of the warranty spec. And as a creator, the stability is one of the most important things in your PC. So getting this one is like within the spec, it's still really, really fast. And you don't need to worry, oh, is this gonna be stable? Or is my RAM gonna keep up? And you're not gonna get any crashes because your RAM is unstable or you're running it a little bit faster than it's actually supported by the CPU. So that's why we go with this one and it's still very very fast RAM. Now for GPU for this price point this was the bit where I actually spent the most time on this price point. Now the one I chose is the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti which might seem like a little bit of a downgrade from the previous budget because of the 8 gigabytes of RAM rather than 12 gigabytes but it is actually faster in terms of clock speeds, CUDA cores, more of them so it's actually better and more powerful GPU just less V RAM. The other option would have been the Arc A770 there. But I'd only recommend the A770 for people who do video and photo editing. If you're working with DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or Photoshop or Lightroom, then the A770 is very, very good and in fact much better than the 3060. It's more like a 3070, slightly better than the 3070, but much more VRAM, which will be helpful when you're working with larger resolutions, as well as the media engine inside there. You can use the Intel Hyper Encoding feature with the iGPU and the dedicated GPU media engine inside, get better exporting or encoding performance. If you're also working with 3D and you need 3D performance and perhaps RTX, you know, cores, then the Arc A770 isn't really good at that and the software support. So Redshift, Octane Render, V-Ray, this Nvidia card will perform much better and more stable in those things. So generally, if you want like a stable, good performance GPU, this 3060 Ti, but if you're only working with video editing, then for video editing, go with the A770, it's a much better bang for buck. And AMD kind of floats in the middle there, but there's some of the stability issues perhaps, or some of the performance issues in some of the programs are not as much support. So I'd kind of leave that one out as well. Because for me as a creator, the overall software support is very, very important perhaps for you as well. Feel free to explore the AMD options on the channel if you're interested, you know, how well does AMD or Intel or Nvidia perform on the channel. I've got a video out there for you, check it out. Now for power supply, we're gonna go with 850 watts. This is fully modular by Cooler Master MWE Gold 850 V2. So this is 850 watt, 80 plus gold, so more power efficient and gives you everything you need for your GPU or CPU and all of the support. So why I like this one is the wattage support. So 850 watt really supports a lot of, you know, parts if you want to upgrade later on because it's actually a little bit more than what we're using for this price point. So I think it gives you future support as well as good wattage and power efficiency. I'd say it's a good option. And for the case at this price point, we're choosing the Fractal Design Focus 2. And this is a very nice minimal case that has a good airflow, so good performance. So we're not going to be choking this. It's very nicely designed and I, I like things that are kind of minimal. Don't like the gaming really things. And there's a few options available, whether you want like a white and black or just solid black or a little bit RGB fans as well. And for that price point, it's really, really good. It's got 240 millimeter fans included, which will help with the airflow. You've got a lot of support for upgrades. If you you want to upgrade to the RAM or GPU or storage or the cooler. It's got a lot of fan support and other things. So I think it's a really, really good case for the price. 
And the total price for this PC is actually less than $1,500. I'm seeing $1,467.46. Now, I highly recommend checking out the latest pricing in the description below, especially during this holiday season, because most likely there's deals on for these parts that i am just mentioned, because these aren't during the deals there, and you might get it even cheaper. So check it out in the description below. But now the upgrades. Bear in mind the upgrades are mix and match compatible. So enjoy. For motherboard, we're going to leave it the same because I think it's not worth upgrading, spending money there because it's a really, really good motherboard. For CPU upgrade though, we're going to go with the 13700K. So from i5 to i7. And this is actually better than the 12. 900k it's got better memory support it's got faster p cores it's got faster e cores and with this gigabyte motherboard you can actually get this 13700k to run the six gigahertz by one click in the bios just enabling six gigahertz mode and this is absolutely insane to get really like 13900ks performance with just one click from the bios because gigabytes running like clever algorithm and uses the faster cores to run a little bit faster which i think is absolutely unbelievable performer and why we're also going with this gigabyte motherboard now when you upgrading the cpu i highly recommend upgrading also the cooler as well as the contact frame now you don't have to but i would recommend to do it because it will give you generally a little bit more better performance and i'll explain this so basically the 13700k starts to run quite hot over 200 watts we're getting to the like 240 watts Depending if you're running the multi-core enhancement, it might get a little bit more. And even though the air cooler can keep up with it, I highly recommend getting this liquid cooler, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360mm cooler, which is one of the best performers for the price point. It's very, very quiet and very, very good liquid cooler. So to not throttle your 13700K, it's also depending on your ambient temperature. If you're in a very hot environment, especially get to this one because it cools it down a little bit better. It just lets the CPU, you know, breathe a little bit more and you're not running it at that hot. Highly recommend this cooler. I've used it in a ton of builds and I'm actually using it in my PC as well but just a 420 millimeter cooler the os ssd we're going to leave the same i don't think we need to change that it's very good ssd for the price but for the second project ssd you can upgrade to Sabin rocket 4 plus 2 terabyte model which gets you a little bit more capacity and for the price point you get very very good performance so if you're looking for a little bit of larger project drive this is really really good option and very very solid performance as well because some of the system integrators like puget system actually switched over from samsung to this after samsung had some uh, firmware issues this is one of the more stable and has very low failure rate so if that is important to you i'll recommend this drive moving on to ram we're going to leave it exactly the same i don't think it's worth upgrading there for this price point you're still going to get the same performance with this 64 gigabytes but now the gpu and here we're going to be getting a huge upgrade and this is probably one of the first things i'd recommend upgrading if you can we're going to go with the rtx 4070 ti and we're going to skip everything in between and you can argue with me that yeah you can look at the used market but the main thing for a creator for me is like getting a new product and you know you're getting the warranty and the peace of mind if you need anything of course you can find good deals in the used market but also you can get ripped off from the used market so do it at your own expense as well as the risk but I think this 4070 Ti is a huge upgrade from the 3060 Ti. Firstly, we're going to get more VRAM and incredibly better 3D performance as well as AV1 encoding support and dual encoders, which means that exporting video gets done a lot faster than the 3060 Ti as well as the 4070 just because of the dual encoders. It can take the frame, split it in half, and encode top half and bottom half, and then you get much, much better encoding performance there. It's a huge upgrade in terms of GPU performance. I highly recommend this one. And for that price, the Zotac one is actually a very, very good budget option. There's some other brands there as well. You can look at Asus and Gigabyte, but Zotac is often the better price point. We'll leave the PSU the same, but now for the PC case upgrade, we're going to go with the Antec Performance 1 Full Tower PC, 
which is the PC case that actually I am using. And I am a big, big fan of this, especially at this price point. Oh, look at that. I can see there's a coupon code there. So check out the latest pricing if there's deals on or whatever. For $149, you're going to get four fans included with this. And they are really good fans. They're thicker, 30 millimeter fans. So they shift a lot of air through. Plus, it actually has 140 millimeter fans in the front. There's 340 millimeter fans blowing through. It's absolutely incredible. So you're going to get very good airflow. It's a solid case. I like building in it. I think it looks pretty cool as well. It's kind of on the borderline of being minimal and a little bit gaming. So it looks a little bit like a Batman futuristic build, but I can still see the minimal aspects of it. Let me know if you enjoy the design. Plus, it's got a screen on top of the case that can show you your GPU and CPU temperature, which is really nice feature there as well. I think generally it's really nice and building in it was really a good pleasure. The top comes off so it's very easy to access everything. I think there's a lot that goes for this case and you can see we're including this in a lot of the budget. And don't forget to get the Thermalrite CPU contact frame. Now you might get it from Thermalrite or some other companies but I highly recommend this one with your 13700K. This will help the CPU to run cooler and not bend as much because it runs that hot. So I highly recommend getting this. This is the best $10 you can spend on your 13700K because it will give you better longevity of the CPU as well as better cooling which will also mean kind of better before performance in terms of clock speeds highly recommend this getting don't forget that one now looking at the total price of the upgrades it gets us to $2,221 so just over $2,200 and perhaps when you're looking at this it's even cheaper but extra $754 in upgrades and this is a really really solid pc now for two grand it's very hard to beat and you've got a huge upgrade path you can upgrade the cpu ram storage you still got empty slots in there there's lots you can do with this if you need any more in the future i think this is a really good kind of mid middle ground now where you get a lot for your money going higher in budget you do get some more performance but not as much for your dollar this is like a really good sweet spot some very important mentions i need to tell you before you're going to build your pc number one if you're a creator and you don't know which parts to upgrade? Because I mentioned the upgrades here. As a photographer or videographer or 3D, you can make a bad choice by upgrading the wrong thing. Sometimes the more tempting thing, because everyone's saying, oh, upgrade your CPU, upgrade your GPU, upgrade your RAM. It might not give you any performance. In fact, sometimes it's lower to upgrade. It's best to get the best for your workflow and i'll explain this in another video so have a look at this if you don't know which one to upgrade yet and how to figure out which is the bottleneck in your workflow secondly there's another few things that i'll leave in the description below if you don't know how to do it so if you don't know how to build your pc or how to set up the drivers or windows or all the software how to do all of that how to stress test your pc or how to configure the fans everything will be linked in the description below even if you've never done it before or want to remind yourself well, how did i do this i'll explain everything step by step you can just look at the videos and then step by step follow my guide and then just build yourself a pc it is really that simple and will give you a lot more performance for your money than just buying pre-built or getting a Mac because you just get better bang for your buck performance for this money. So everything you need is linked in the description below. I highly recommend go checking it out. It might be hard to find the YouTube description now these days, but it is down there. Everything's linked there. And if your budget is higher or less, then check out the other budget of this same video series. It's linked in the description below. As always, guys, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, subscribe and hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.